Okay, so we're just going to take a moment to talk about the story of uh, zip co or of time zones making them automatic. Uh, we know that time zones are associated to someone's location, the physical location. So the story is, as a user, I would like the time zone for a contact to update automatically based on the location of the contact so that I do not need to ask the contact which time zone they live in and there is improved data quality. Acceptance criteria is, when mailing state on the contact record is updated, the corresponding time zone is updated. So as we're talking about this story, let's uh, kind of keep in mind that time zone and the uh, daylight savings time usage actually can be split. And when those two are put together, we can get to does the con what time is it at the contact record level. So let's take a look at what we have for you know, kind of our state. So this is just pulled from uh, Wikipedia. I trust their source of information, thousand eyes, you know, power of the crowd. So here we go. Alabama, we're good with, right? Makes sense. Alaska, we can absolutely do this, um, e even though it's split. It's split by county, and it's pretty easy. Arizona, we find that the state actually does have a complete uh, one time zone usage, except the Navajo Nation uses daylight savings time, whereas Arizona does not. And Hawaii is another one of those states where the entire state is indeed a one time zone, but it, uh, but it does not use daylight savings time. So that is, that is our problem. So the solution that I suggest is one that we store the time zones uh, by zip codes. So I was able to source a list of U.S. zip codes with their corresponding time zones and then um, using this list here discover if they're using daylight savings time or not. So Manning has built out a table called zip codes. I suggest that we append to that zip codes file two additional fields, one called time zone, and the other one, a Boolean, or true-false field, yes, no, one, zero, however you want to look at it, called times are called daylight savings time. And if it is set to true, then that zip code would indeed use daylight savings time. If it's set to false, then that zip code would not use daylight savings time. And with the two pieces of information, the time zone, Pacific Standard Time, and if we know if they're using daylight savings time or not, then we'll be able to get to what is the time of the contact record. And I think that's the ultimate intent of the story. Um, it's not, you know, fully there. Our story right now is just about time zones, and I think that's what we should complete in this sprint. And then at next, in our next sprint, we should add on what time is it at the contact record. Now, I found a little formula that actually will uh, do that for us. Not part of it. I mean, it's not all the way there. But basically, you know, it's, it's this, this guy right here because it does follow a consistent pattern of, you know, of dates the second Sunday of March or whatever it is, something along those lines. So we have a way to get there. But for this story, I recommend that we do the, on the zip code uh, table, we append two additional fields, one called time zone, the other one a Boolean uh, DST, daylight savings time. And if you have that information in 360, and I suspect that you already do, we can simply import it over. If you do not, I was able to grab that information from the U.S. Postal Service. So here's just a, a list of all U.S. zip codes. Now, I've played with this information before and the corresponding time zone. I, I've played with this information before, uh, being, uh, you know, pulling stuff from the U.S. Postal Service. And my experience has been that the data quality is about 98% there. It is not 100% there. There's some holes. Um, I can fill some of those holes, but not all those um, holes will I be able to easily fill. For example, the states like Arizona, like California, where they're all in one time zone. If there is a time zone hole, I can 
quickly and easily fill that role. If not, a, I'd be happy to do it. The additional piece of the story is then we would be writing a trigger that says, when the city, state, or zip is updated on the mailing contact, is updated, please go to the zip code table, find the zip code, and then update the time zone and the DSP, Daylight Savings uh, Field, for the contact records based off of what's in the zip code table. So, you know, if we were thinking about old databases, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's just so we're treating that zip code table like a lookup table, right? Um, I think, you, you know, you could do a VLOOKUP in Excel would be a, another example. It's pretty much a, a kin functionality, except we're just moving the data and leaving it there. Now, I am not suggesting that we build the corollary trigger that says if the time zone is updated in the zip code table, then also update the contact record. So this would be just a one way, and I would rely on the admin to know that if they update a time zone in the zip code table, that then they're going to need to go back and update the contacts. Now, we could build the, uh, the additional uh, uh, trigger as well, but I, I really, I, it feels like it's going to be overkill for me, and maybe it's one of those stories that we write and we parse out and we see where we're at in Sprint 3. I would love to know your thoughts. This was a lot of information. If it's at all confusing, um, let me know. In summary, what I'm looking for is pretty much two things. One, yes, your solution, a, a, a green light or a red light on the proposed solution of building the trigger on, on contacts and uh, putting the information onto the zip code table. And then the following piece of, do you have time zones and daylight savings Boolean uh, or something akin in the 360 database that we can just import? Or should I go ahead and use the Postal Service information? Let me know.